What really is different about the AHA? Each of us has had to really be part of that space that we call early career. And this is extremely important for us as an organization when we recognize that early career is about the future. Early career, we defining as PhD or MD students or fellows in, still in training. Completed the training in the last four years or four, first four years of their faculty appointment. Of a total overall membership of now over 34,000, we have almost 10,000 early career members and uh, 963 fellows in training. So 29% of our total membership are, by this definition, early career. The Council Operations Committee in particular want to broaden our reach. We want to uh, increase opportunities for participation and expand our inclusivity. So as an early career uh, professional, uh, what keeps you up at night? Earlier on uh, in residency, uh, it's really about how do I find mentors uh, to mentor me. Uh, kind of going up the chain and thinking about the postdocs. How do I really develop research questions? How do I get my first grant? Um, and how do I continuously be funded kind of over time? Mentorship, feeling connected, having people help you with your research, all of those can be part of the American Heart Association. So how are we doing it? How are we addressing the needs? Best in science, best science in class, that's always going to be the cornerstone of AHA, AHA's brand, and what we're offering throughout these different channels. People want to master their specialty, but they go to the meetings, They're, they want dynamic, experiential, creative learning opportunities. And finally, they want to be recognized, they want to understand, how do I get involved with AHA? And they also want opportunities for recognition via awards, etc. And all of the councils now fe feature early career um, award opportunities at sessions and the specialty meetings. Specialty content is aimed at early career. There's some incredibly exciting scientific opportunities and learning opportunities at sessions. One of my favorites is the cardiovascular surgery and anesthesia is offering a hands-on wet lab for valve surgery. Vascular Discovery is offering and sessions are offering next generation technology boot camps where people can learn how to actually do some of these newer methods. The online learning platforms also are going more experiential. Online learning has a patient simulation case study so that people can actually learn through the cases. And there's eBooks for a variety of topics such as non-ST elevation MIs. One of the early leaders in gamification was the Stroke Council game of strokes where they have continents competing against each other is completely uproarious and a high learning value experience. EP Central Jeopardy is also a high value learning experience. People increasingly want to be able to learn where they are and the guidelines on the go has been very important. There are over 100,000 downloads of the guidelines on the go. People want to be able to carry their learning with them on their phones and not just have to go to um, a static computer station. We have e-courses available. There are social events across the programs. People not only want to learn about their science. The science is the easiest part of our careers. It's more the soft skills, the leadership, how to actually have a career that people also are hungry to find out about. But increasingly, we're also having content that is focused on leadership. At the Research Leaders Academy, we had communicating science. How do you talk about your science to a lay audience? People are hungry for these soft skills, and that's what we're trying to deliver in all of our venues. Early career members can be chairs and members of early career programming. They're also members on all of our program planning committees. They're peer reviewers for abstracts. They're moderators at specialty conferences. They can be faculty, and um, now they have So Me, which I actually am generationally tone deaf and had to have translated to me, which means social media. We have uh, a total of almost 1,800 editors involved on the mastheads. Uh, and importantly, we have almost 300 early career people. With, I think, a lot of foresight, the Manuscript Oversight Committee requested and required that 20% of people in all of the guidelines be early career. An extraordinary opportunity for early career people to get involved at a very high level, not just with training, but with networking opportunities as well, which, which are really pivotal. 
Um, as you know, the scope of science within the American Heart Association is very broad, going from basic to translational to clinical to population science. Um, and within that, we have a focus not only on cardiovascular disease, but cerebrovascular disease, hypertension as well. And these are represented in all of the journals. And uh, I think one of the important value propositions for all of the people at the early career and fellow and training age is the value proposition of investing a little bit of time for those networking opportunities that are absolutely pivotal. I think the Scientific Publishing Committee is one of many tools that we have as an organization to do it. We are going to continue to integrate not only uh, within the journals themselves, but importantly use the councils. And what the HA uh, leadership wanted me to, to kind of think about is uh, how is your department supporting uh, early career uh, researchers? Now we in the research uh, committee uh, are committed uh, to supporting our early career uh, investigators. Our program has uh, four uh, major thrusts and these include basic science and content, research funding, uh, engagement opportunities, leadership op uh, development, and also engage, uh, leadership development. This slide shows uh, the diverse uh, portfolio of uh, the different research programs that are tailored to the early career investigators. And here you can see that the AHA program, uh, which are specifically targeted uh, to these uh, early investigators. And these include, for example, uh, undergraduate fellowships, pre-doc and post-doc fellowships, uh, and also uh, career development awards. And then the most recently created program, which will launch in 2019, is the Underrepresented Minority Undergraduate Award. And in total, all these awards have supported more than 500 early career investigators this year. The Research Committee has also designed many opportunities for early career investigators to become engaged in other areas of science and leadership roles. To that end, uh, the AHA has a number of new initiatives that uh, support these early career investigators. I just want to highlight a few examples. Uh, one example is the Innovative uh, Project Award. Uh, another example are the, uh, is the Transformative uh, uh, Project Award. And both of these are non-traditional portfolio uh, awards. Another example is the Collaborative uh, Science Award. And this has been altered to require at least one of the co-PIs that must be early career or mid-career uh, stage investigators. And finally, within the SFRN, uh, it is uh, strongly encouraged that early career faculty be uh, included as PIs on these uh, research programs, and also early career investigators have been mentored to assume leadership uh, position later on within the SFRN Center. Now, as others have mentioned, the AHA is focused on providing leadership development opportunities. In considering the leadership levels, uh, about one-third of the reviewers on the AHA grant review panels are now uh, early career investigators. And finally, uh, the AHA is also putting uh, together a number of the new initiatives to enhance the leadership skills for its early career investigators. One of the main goals uh, for the Research Leaders Academy is to develop uh, future research leaders. Uh, and uh, again, these include the early career investigators. The Research Committee is also putting together uh, several uh, tools uh, to support uh, leadership uh, skills uh, improvement. And these include, uh, for example, expanded peer review, lay summary uh, training, and also team science uh, tools kit. If you talk to a lot of the people, the lifers, I call them, somebody told us to get involved with the AHA early on. And you find places, and you, you get connected, and you, you follow a mission. You will fulfill what I, I strongly believe is one of the things we all strive as human beings to have a meaning in life. My hope would be that you will be purposeful about early careers with attention on diversity, with attention to gender, with attention to really engaging because I think hybrid vigor is how you're able to drive innovation.